thing. So uh, I'll go hand over to Paul now, who's going to share his screen, and uh, he's just going to take us through some of the. Um, I actually saw this part of this presentation a, a couple of months ago, and it was excellent. So um, in for a treat, folks. Okay. So I'll hand over to Paul now. Thanks very much, Craig. I'm just fire off, and hopefully you can see just coming through coming up on the screen. Anyway, I hope all your Christmas shopping and everything is going well, folks. <laughs> Or at least better than mine. Why is this taking a time? Let me just cancel it again and just. Uh, For sake. Okay, I need to go back. I can see yeah. horrible things happening down the bottom. That's share. it. Just need to share. Always yeah. helps yeah. if I share it. Thank you for sharing now. Excuse my complete That's in ah, okay. well, ineptitude. Yeah. Right here we go. So. Um, First of all, we're going to be talking a little bit about mounting and stand options, and this is um, our particular context here is that we are not a statutory health or NHS or AEC um, or education service. Um, we don't have a team of technicians working with us. Uh, we have a very basic workshop, but um, it's not great, uh, and we also work with learners across Scotland. So last week, for example, um, I started off by going on Tuesday to Hamilton and back. And then on the Wednesday, I went to Irvine and Ayrshire and back. Then on Thursday, I went down to Dalbeatie, which is in the south of Scotland. Uh, I stayed overnight with my good pal, Stuart. And then on Friday, I went to Dumfries and then to Thornhill. So I think that was about 450 miles or thereabouts. <laughs> so, um, aye. So in our situation, we need to try and find a solution in one visit because we can't nip down the road, um, measure a few things, come back, order the bits, and then go out again um, because it just takes too long to do that. You can't take your shed with you either, can you? Indeed. We no. do not have a van. Yeah. Um, and in fact, my preference is that I want to carry as much of the gear on my motorbike. Mm -hmm. um, I don't actually go to Dumfries very often on the motorbike these days, especially in December, because by the time I arrived, my hands would be freezing and I wouldn't be able to speak uh, and it would take me an hour to warm up before I could function. Um, but I do like to carry it home so that I can, uh, I don't have to come into Edinburgh with a car. So I, I'd like to fit it all into my motorbike, um, but not this one though. Um, we, this, we made a mistake when we went to Vietnam and chose to go over the high van pass on a moped um, on the wrong day. So um, today's topic, we're meant to be discussing options for safely mounting assistive technology. Um, I'm not going to demo how this can be done because I decided that would be too complicated. Um, so I've taken the easy way out and prepared a PowerPoint presentation instead. So let's have, take a look through. And um, there are a number of things that we need to uh, take into account, I think. Um, there's uh, the task and the user. Um, and the device that you're trying to mount and what you're trying to mount it on. So we could be talking about a communication aid or environmental control system, a tablet, like an iPad, a mobile phone, camera, a cup. And then there could be controls, joystick switches, gamepad, um, or and other things. Uh, in terms of the mounting site, we could be talking about a wheelchair or a desk um, or a floor stand or over a bed. So quite a lot of different options um, to consider. Um, a really good source of information and advice is the MatDoc website. Um, that's a UK uh, resource, but it's open to anyone worldwide. Um, and it's been put together by a working group of practitioners. Uh, and they have um, checklists and standards and guidelines that you can download. So I really recommend that that's worthwhile taking a look at, um, as well as the information from the manufacturers. Um, and, and I like, the, these are the, the nine principles that they've got. So consider all contexts in which the technology we, will be used. Consider the needs of all those who will in, interact with the technology. So the user, obviously, but also um, parents or support staff or carers. Uh, provide equipment that gives flexibility because if something fails or breaks, um, then you hopefully have a plan B. Um, position devices and mounts in a protective fashion, so we're trying to avoid, I suppose, having um, you know 
five thousand pounds worth of aggies stuck in a long pole on a powered wheelchair and so when you swing around inadvertently to find your way through a small narrow doorway um you don't find that it's in pieces on the floor consider the safety of the user and those around them um, safety testing should be relevant and appropriate and i like this number seven um, use risk management as a tool to identify uncertainty to improve safety rather than as a way of saying no you can't do that user instruction and formats that are relevant and appropriate and so the mat doc guidance suggests things like photographs labeled um, and using commercially available products where possible um, rather than bespoke solutions although sometimes those are necessary um, some of our own factors recently we wanted to invest in some new mounting systems and so we were considering what we needed to take into account and we decided that the, the, the issues are well the weight of the device that we're trying to mount and what that means for the mounting system and particularly the clamp when you're trying to attach it to a wheelchair um the the, the site the mounting site and and what that means in terms of things like wheelchair stability the other things that we thought we were important does it need to be adjustable and by whom um and of, usually, often the answer to that is yes, it does, because you need to, you may need to move things around, particularly if it's, for example, a head switch. Um, another factor, which is important, we think, is to have it easily removed and replaced in the same position. Um, if it's an eye gaze device, it really helps if the, uh, if the system is put back in approximately the same position. And the same, of course, goes for controls and, you know, chin joysticks or head switches. Um, and then there's thing, uh, questions about security and rigidity. So you, you, you do want the thing to be um, secure and rigid and not to move. Uh, although there are considered times when that's you know, got to be thought about. If it's a head switch, for example, and you, and you might have a tendency to, to batter it quite hard with your head at a potential risk to oneself, um, issues of safety and cost, of course, and appearance. And I've made that in bold because um, we think it's really important to have something that looks as cool as possible. And we think that because when we're trying to do the job, then users tend to say it's important, we think. So it sounds quite simple to get the equipment in the correct place, but of course, it, it actually can be quite difficult. Um, because there are so many options available. So we'll just take a look at a few. And um, if we're thinking of uh, switches or controls or small devices, then um, on the left-hand side, we've got the Flexi system. Um, and it, um, it's uh, uh, created really using something very similar to Lockline um, flexible hose components. Uh, it, it, you can move it around. It's kind of like a gooseneck. Um, so it's good from that point of view, but it does have give in it. So if you bash it, quite hard, then it's going to move. And it may not be in the place you expect it to be the last time you used it. And then the most, probably the mo a very common solution is the universal switch mount, um, or it's made by M Manfrotto, um, really f originally for mounting camera equipment. Um, and so that's on the right hand side there. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen those before. They're movable, quite heavy. Um, and they, they only come in the size they come in. And so if you wanted something smaller or lighter um, or longer, then they may not be what you want, but still very useful for trying things out quickly. A few other examples. On the left-hand side, we have um, a, an example from the DMD Pathfinders Touch, Tap, Swipe document. This is really good. It's produced by um, people that use assistive technology themselves. And it's got loads of examples of ways to mount um, all sorts of equipment in different ways. So that's well worth. So if you do a Google search for DMD Pathfinder, you should find it. In the top right, we have the RAM mount system. And they, I think RAM were originally produced for mountain bikes and, um, uh, you know, leisure equipment. Um, but they, do ha they can be used for mounting things in wheelchairs and uh, devices as well. In the bottom right, we have the Joy Factory systems. Um, they are, I think they're really attractive, but they are kind of limited by the slightly 
restricted range of, of clamps uh, for mounting it on wheelchairs and other devices. Then we have the most the more common assistive technology um, suppliers, so DC, long established, um, sold it by Mount and Moore in the United Kingdom. Um, we have the standard rigid mount, um, very straightforward, easy to use, uh, and then the M series, which is a wee bit lighter for um, less substantial equipment. Or the light series, again, this is for even lighter. Um, and then on the right hand side, we have an example of their head switch mount. Readapt is a, um, a German company, um, so they are also um, targeting the assistive technology mounting market. Um, their M3D series is, is the, the heaviest. The hybrid on the right um, is slightly lighter for slightly lighter devices. Then we have the L3D, which is lighter again, and an example of a head switch mount from, mount from Readapt on the right from, um, made of L3D. Uh, they have three different tube um, or rod diameters, um, 10 millimeter, 16 millimeter, which is the L3D, and 22 millimeter, which is the M3 series. But does does lighter mean weaker pole? Um, that, yes, it does. Aye, yeah. exactly. So, so, so when we were looking at what we wanted to buy this time around, um, then we, we we said, well, we want to mount iPads. We've got some Surface Pro tablets. We've got. Uh, and then we've got some older, some um, some, some heavier mm -hmm. uh, communication aids. And so the first question we ask ourselves is, well, what weight are they? Because that determines what you could use to mount them. Um, so the iPad weighs in at 440 grams. Uh, a Surface Pro with a PCI mini bracket and a camera is 1.4, um, roughly speaking, according to their mm -hmm. website. And then when it comes to the dedicated communication aids, um, you're up into the mm. uh, two and a half kilo um, yeah. things. Apologies for our American friends. I didn't uh, have time to convert it into pounds. Um, and then, OK, so that's the, the weights that we're looking at. And then here's some examples of the capacity of the devices, um, uh, of the, the mounting systems, just so we can see what we're talking about. So things like the Flexi um, is, is fine if you're wanting to have switches or possibly an iPad, although I think it very much depends on the length of the, um, you know, the, the, the mounting thing, because the longer it is, then the less, the, the greater the leverage um, and um, the more likely it is to, you know, topple over. Mm -hmm. uh, so I suppose if you're looking at an iPad um, or a tablet or a mobile phone, um, the RAM mount, or the lightweight readapt, um, or maybe the flexi. Um, if it switches, then they don't weigh very much, and so any of the lightweight systems would do the job. Um, but if it's our dedicated communication aid, like an i12 or a grid pad or an accent, um, they, then you're going to be going for the Monty, um, the M3D from readapt, um, or the, the standard Daisy. Um, I've used the Joy ones for iPads before. They, they were, yeah, they work quite well. Yes. And I, I, th I mean, if you can manage to get them clamped on the wheelchair, then I mm -hmm. think they're quite good. Yeah. Um, and although they're, they're yeah, uh, trying to get them off quickly um, mm -hmm. is maybe a wee bit harder, right, yeah. I think. Um, um, so considering the weights, and then another thing that I always, I always find difficult is this business of finding the frame clamp. Um, and so here's a few of the wheelchairs of what I have come across in recent years. Um, so you could have manual wheelchairs, uh, and they come in different tube sizes. So if it, they're, they're typically round tubes, but they come in different diameters. So you need a variety of frame clamps to fit. Um, and then electric wheelchairs are just much more complicated. So most of them nowadays have got quite sophisticated chassis, often with frames that aren't round. They're, they tend to be oval. And even uh, wheelchairs from the same company, like Invacare, if you look very carefully, the XTR2, you'd be probably wanting to mount your device on the, the frame, the, the seat frame, which has got an extruded aluminium thing and could take T-nuts. The Spectra Blitz below might look the same in terms of the chassis, but if you look carefully at the seat, it doesn't have these extruded aluminium mounts. 
Um, same for the sulfur, salsa. The M2 um, has got a slightly different design than the, the Zippy. So you're going to end up with, um, and, and I think the frame cramps, the, the wheelchair cramps are really important. You, you, you can, of course, use uh, a super cramp, which is typically what comes on quite a lot of our mounting systems, the lightweight ones. And it's good because it fits to round or square section. But it's not that secure and it's quite big and bulky. And I just tend to think, it, it, to me, it, it's, it's not really good enough. Um, and it tends to easily slide off um, and, and it's not as secure as I, was, as I would like it to be. Um, so that if we wanted to look at dedicated crack clamps that are designed for different wheelchairs, well, um, DC, one of the advantages of the DC system, I think, is that they've got um, a very large range of them. And I had a look on the Mounts and More website just before, and I, I counted 45 different frame clamps. And then that, they seem to cost £75 each. So if I bought the whole lot to cover all eventualities, um, then that would be £4,000. Um, mm. and, and, and not only that, that would need a van to carry them mm. around. Yeah. Um, so that's not great. And Readapt, of course, are the same. Um, and it's fantastic. You've got this flexibility. But there is a very large number of, uh, of mounting options. Um, and so that presents us with a problem, because if we're wanting to roll up to some school in Dumfries mm -hmm. and um, yeah. fix it, then, uh, mm. then what on earth do we do? So here's an example. Um, and it's a simple one. Uh, it's a recent thing that I was involved with. So the, the, the task was to mount an iPhone. So it's lightweight, um, and that makes it a wee bit easier. We want to be able to take it on and off. So we're looking for a quick release system. Um, and we, even though it's an I, iPhone, then it's an expensive iPhone. Um, and so we want it to be really secure. And so we came up with a system that's based on Readapt. Um, so we've got a secure wheelchair frame clamp and a, a quick release system. Um, the, the person that's using this um, has got a, a finger trackball, and so we also mounted that using Readapt uh, 10 millimeter rods and joints. Um, and this was a nice tweet that came in a, a few weeks ago. Um, and so it works really well, and it's, it's, it is very secure and it's easy to take off and on. Um, so it, well, although it looks kind of straightforward, uh, then uh, um, I think the, the frame clamp is a really important part of the whole affair. And although the Readapt equipment is more expensive than things you could buy off Amazon, um, I think it's worth it um, because uh, we have confidence with the, you know, the quality of the, the end result. One thing that you'll notice in the photograph is the, the finger mouse has actually become detached um, because I, try, I, I glued it on with Arrowdite and it just uh, um, fell off. So if anyone's got any suggestions, please feel yeah. free pop them into the to pop them into the text below, box. Yeah. Now, one of the, what, what we ended up doing um, uh, uh, earlier on to try and get around this problem was we, we bought the Readapt service kit, um, which was affordable for us anyway, um, and it has all the wheelchair frame clamps. Um, now, that's, I'm not saying that we prefer Readapt to DC because we use them both, um, but I mention this in passing because if you're in the same situation as we are, um, then having the service kit means that you can, in this case, um, go to the school um, and you can be fairly confident that you can um, fix the, the system securely to the wheelchair frame. Sorry to, to interrupt, Paul, but yeah. I normally keep the questions to the end, but um, Stephen said Sugru moldable glue. I don't uh, know. That's a good idea. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know. Thank you for that, Steve. Want to try? try Thanks, it. Steve. Val asks the cost. I think it was two hundred and fifty pounds, and that was from Smile Smart Technology in the UK, um, and it's very good value compared with the four thousand plus that mm -hmm. buying yeah. them individually. Mm -hmm. You do have to learn to use it, of course, which is something that I'm still coming to getting to grips with. Um, here's another wee example, and just a recent one. And so the the task was to uh, mount this um, uh, compact keyboard and the glide pad 
on an ordinary classroom seat um, and the learner is using her toes to um, as a method of access. And in this case, I used a Manfrotto nano clamp, so it's a cheaper version of the super clamp, smaller um, and a wee bit more, uh, well, just, just smaller and easier to fit, plus some readapt um, rods and connectors. And that's the, the result on the right hand side. Um, head switches, uh, I think we could have, have a few things to say about head switches. What time is it? Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, oh, crack on. Um, this is a brilliant example. If you go, do a Google search for Apple accessibility, and it's a lovely um, uh, video of different um, Apple accessibility features. And this, the, the person that's actually edited the video, apparently, um, is using two head switches, and they're just strapped on with Velcro straps. Um, so if you have a headrest, then that might be the simplest way of doing it. Uh, a couple of things to say about head switches. Um, I used to, in the olden days, um, take switches and then cut out Evazote and glue it on top um, because I was concerned about uh, people getting sore heads. Um, but you can now get these fantastic softy tops from Smart Smile Smart Technology for either Pico buttons um, or jelly beans, I think. Um, and they do the same job. You just clip them off and then clip the new yeah, switches back on. They're off. really yeah. good. Um, and and this is another example. I think these were invented by Smile Smart, but they're now available from Readapt. And so um, basically it's, it's, a, it's a rod, but it's flexible so that when you connect with it, it gives, but it springs back into the position that it was before when you used it. And that's very helpful. So here's a here's an interactive thing. Um, this is meant to be a head switch. Um, and we're, uh, the, the seat that the learner is in presented us with a challenge. Any suggestions for what we could do better here? Where, where are the switches located about? Uh, well, um, the, the mount itself is um, attached uh, to the, I guess it's the armrest, mm -hmm. and then the switch itself is up here. No suggestions, oh well. Well, but, valves typing, my valve might, oh yes, very good. Any chance of using the down pole as back of a headrest? Yeah, possibly. Um, that's. The, the good news was that the headrest uh, was replaced um, and then we had a fighting chance of actually fixing things in the right place. And that's basically exactly what we did. That looks like a much more slicker solution. Isn't yes, it? Yeah, I think so. Idea. Um, and it, it, because the thing about this is there's loads of leverage on here and this clamp, you know, it's not going to last. You can tell that um, because of the leverage and because the clamp is attached to a, a, a relatively small gauge um, tube. Um, so desks, trees and sand, these are other things that you come across as well. Uh, some examples, we have a big grips, very popular um, for iPads, but if you if you prod it too hard, then they tend to fall over. Um, recently, uh, we lent, uh, this is just a wooden cookbook stand. Uh, this worked extremely well until a piece of wood broke off, and, <laughs> um, and so I had to bring it back. And then we have our Maxxess trees and stands, Velcro trees and stands. Um, from Maxis in the UK. Just a couple of things that we use a lot these days are these um, stands from IKEA at two pounds a head. Uh, and we also quite like the eye risers as well. Um, they're, I, they're I do like those. Uh, I, I've lent, loaned quite a few out actually to pupils and schools. Yeah, I saw that. So, They've all gone kids. from the yeah. shelves. In yeah, fact, it's probably me actually. Because <laughs> we had about 20. I didn't realise they're from IKEA. But, they've, all, uh, they've all disappeared. Yeah, they're very good. They don't fold, but they're, no, they're really yeah, they're quite kind robust. Of yeah. robust yeah. Uh, so here's a common problem to present you with, if anyone's still there. Um, so here we go. Primary school, joystick, Velcro, all working fine. And then the learner goes to secondary school and you want to get that joystick. It's got to be secured to the desk. Um, but in secondary school, it's got to be secured to the desk in multiple classrooms. And you can't do anything too permanent to the desks because their desks are all used by other learners. Um, so if anyone's got a solution to this, um, please fire it our way. Mm, yeah. Because I haven't come up with one. I'll leave you with that. Um, so let's move on to larger and heavier devices. And here we have a Toby i12 uh, on a Salsa M2. Yep, I think so. And at the moment, it's got a DC standard series. We have a locking frame clamp. Um, 
and that's good because it's easy to remove and uh, you can have the angle at greater than 15 degrees. If you had an ordinary um, uh, frame clamp where it just slots in, uh, Daisy's advice is to have the, the, the angle less than 15 degrees. But this could still be improved. So again, um, if anyone's got some ideas for what we could do here, then I'd be grateful to hear them. The problem with this is we can't move it any further forward because there is no space to mount it. Um, and I don't think that mounting it on the any other component parts of the seat frame would be secure enough. Um, no, nobody, nobody coming up with any ideas. But I think that's us now at 26 minutes past. So all that remains okay, to be said you. is that's great, Paul. Thanks. thank you for attending yeah, thank and you. a Merry Christmas yeah. to one and all. Uh, well, just before we go, that uh, I, I think there's quite a, a broad range of experience and, and knowledge, people who are attending just now. So I just wonder if anyone has any questions for Paul or any, any suggestions or recommendations or maybe something that maybe Paul hasn't covered that you would that you maybe know about or you've you've tried or you've used it would be good to um so Megan's for example saying can you increase the offset on that so I guess that must yes. be the Toby I-22 uh yep that's exactly right so we can have one of the, the the yeah the DC offset links um and you could bring it forward I think they're about three gives you about three inches um so we could definitely remove uh, reduce the angle um of that Okay. Good idea. Great. Uh, um, can we have a copy of the weights, the weight slide? Um, yes. Well, yes. Uh, there'll be an archive of this. It'll probably be ready by tomorrow, um, Kathy. So if you, uh, I'll send, I'll send everyone the the URL actually, oh, and you can just log in and you can get a, 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 an example of. You can get a. You know, all, all the links are available on the recording. Uh, he was saying, thanks, guys. Good ideas at Info. Uh, Fiona, uh, th Merry Christmas to you, Fiona. Uh, and thanks, Tammy. Thanks for, uh, I hope you enjoy the rest of your day as well. OK, thanks, Cathy. OK, if there's no more questions or uh, suggestions, I think we'll just draw it to a close. Thanks, Paul. And thanks to everyone for, for attending. Oh, Val's okay. typing. Yamaguchi's yeah, typing. Thanks, Cathy. Yeah. OK, thanks, Yamaguchi. Okay, thank you. You too. You too, Val. Thanks, everyone. Bye.